Welcome to the Content Amplified Podcast, brought to you by Masset. Our goal is to help you get more from your marketing content. Each episode is a 10 to 15 minute interview with industry experts that share amazing insights to help you squeeze as much juice from your content as you possibly can. Here's today's interview. Welcome back to another episode of Content Amplified. Today, I'm joined by Jacob. Jacob, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me, Ben. I'm excited to have you. Today, this is going to be a fun subject. But before we dive in, Jacob, maybe just share a little bit about who you are, what you love about content marketing, and uh, let us get to know you a little bit. Yeah, I'm uh, currently the head of content marketing SEO at a company called Softer, softer softer.io. We're a no-code internal like app and um, tool builder, um, Series A, and we've been growing for about two years. All things like uh, client portals, uh, internal apps, stuff like that. You can build no-code on top of uh, Airtable or other data sources. I've been like led content before that though i'm pretty new here it's about a month in but i've been at uh active campaign so email marketing marketing automation tool led content at uh, scribe uh g2 a couple other stops as well i'm a journalist by trade so i have like no practical or um i don't know i've never learned anything about marketing except doing it hands-on and being at a bunch of software companies basically in chicago uh but i i love I thought I came in loving storytelling and I've come out loving data and insights and really being like learning how to grow um, companies through content. So it's been an evolution for me. I love it. And one of the coolest things, I think journalists make amazing marketers. And, And so often, even on this podcast, we get to interview amazing journalists who know how to tell the story, how to tell other people's stories, things of that nature. And I think it's a really powerful beginning. So it is one of the most relevant backgrounds I think people can get. Um, but it's always funny because uh, it's so often kind of the pathway to marketing. Um, for today, what we're going to talk about is something that every single content marketer, and honestly, every single marketer is going to have to think about and go through. And it's really the big question of how do I tie my content into revenue? What What is it producing? How do we track it? How do we justify it? How do we grow it? How do we do these things? And it always comes back to the fact that it needs to be tied into revenue. So Jacob, in your experience, you've seen both sides of the coin where it's gone well and it's gone poorly when it comes to actually being able to tie content to revenue. What makes the difference? What what can a business do to actually do a better job of tying content directly to revenue? Yeah. So I, again, I've done this a bunch of times and I failed at it or not known the importance and then uh, had it bite me. And then I've had the other side where I've used it to expand both my role, my team, whatever else. And so, um, you know, I, the negative example at G2, I was leading a team. We scaled it to 22 different content creators of sorts. And so we were creating all these clusters, G2, you know, software review sites. So we were competing against every software company in the world, basically. We were competing against project management tools for our category because they write about those things as well. Same thing with CRM, and you just go down the line with categories. So we needed a big content team to create those clusters that you know any of those companies would create on their own. We were trying to do that same thing. We had a great domain, scaled. We were publishing hundreds of pieces a month, um, grew our traffic from 50,000 to 1.5 million in a year, year and a half. Uh, awesome case study. And yet, we weren't trying to sell a product from those blogs. We were trying to push people to from, you know, what is project management over to the project management category, or we were trying to, you know, do the thing where I think like a lot of content marketers think if we write about project management, our uh, pillar or whatever it is, will will improve its ranking. I think there is truth to that. Really hard to prove that out, right? If we have a bunch of categories that are all in the top five, They fluctuate all the time because of algorithm changes, because of what our competitors are doing, because of link building, because of content. How do you prove that those 20 blogs that aren't really sending much uh, referral traffic over are increasing those rankings or holding those rankings? Really tough to do. So we hired all these people. Within two years, over half the team was laid off. I had left the company. Very like disappointing uh, thing. There's like tons of traffic. Get to tell that on podcasts and talk, but it like still wasn't a positive thing for many people's careers. And I think there was a lot of 
ROI from that content, but very hard to prove. So like I came out of that thinking, I don't want that to happen again. I'm never going to be in that position if I can help it. Um, and so on the other side, I've been at places, I think Scribe is my best um, example here. So we had no blog at all, maybe 10 pieces when I came in, scaled that to 800 over the course of a year and a half. But six months in, uh, the best thing I did was really figure out how to say, we published this many blogs at in, in the last six months, we've turned that into this many signups of free users, this many paid users. When you scale that over, you know, one year, 18 months, two years, et cetera, here's what that means for revenue. So both like the MRR and how that's scaling, the overall like ARR when you drag that, you know, spreadsheet over. And then we were adding like lifetime value as a metric. And we were learning about that as a company, but saying like we're putting in, you know, this many thousand dollars a month, six months later, we're breaking even on that. So now we know. So I remember having that, like doing all that math, building those projections, going on like a walk when, during our onsite with the CEO. And she said like, well, why don't we just do three more? Like, is there a reason we shouldn't be doing more of this? So we scale that to 4X the content. Uh, but that was really, a, because I had those numbers and was able to build those projections, something I didn't have earlier in my career, like it opened up doors, it advanced what I was doing at the company and let us scale. So I'm not sure if that fully answered everything, but that's like, that is what it empowered me as a single content marketer to do by having those those metrics. I love that. And I love how you took the past experience and ultimately said, okay, this is never going to happen to me again. I'm going to be able to prove our value. I'm going to show the ROI. And it became a focal point. And now it sounds like a strength. You were able to basically, with one walk and conversation and a spreadsheet, be able to go out there and forex the amount of you know opportunities and budget, things like that for your, for your group. And, uh, that's, that's amazing. Three, four X is everyone's dream if they can prove it. So logistically, when you're looking at it, how did you be able to close the gap? Like you look at the trev, you know, the, the traffic and you got it to revenue. How did you connect some of those steps? Now you talked to me earlier, this, a lot of this is an PLG motion, things like that, but how do you connect those gaps? What were some you know, did you need tools? How did you track it? What did you do? How did that start to to kind of get filled in the middle? Yeah, definitely. So some of it's tooling. Some of it's, I think it starts with like mindset a little bit. And I don't, I think this is oversimplifying, but, you know, early on, you're just so focused on like, did this keyword rank? What's our traffic, right? And so G2 had a little bit of that. I think our mandate problem was our goal overall. So you need to start with the right goals. We were gold on go get a million monthly traffic to the blog. So we did that. And then that didn't convert to revenue. So mm. it was like, uh, we were, were going after the wrong goals for the business, like the marketing goal and the business goal weren't aligned. So that was an issue. And something again, like learning, uh, and at that level, at a manager level, like wasn't on me, but there was some things that I could do differently. Uh, you know, we were trying to track or like, understand how we were impacting goals like we'd see a sales deal and like where they came from and we could look in hubspot and understand some of that but it wasn't all set up properly because again it wasn't like our key focus so at scribe there was tooling like i had mix panel and being a plg motion i could, we can see really somebody that comes to this page their first touch what do they do within that you know seven days month whatever the goal was um and we can see that person signed up or that person's converted to a paid user so i had tools that made it much easier for me um but again the the goals super mattered and then my focus on it. so for me like one of the lessons was what is the person that you're reporting to care about and then like how should you be you care so you might have traffic as your goal but really for like do you want to get more budget you have to figure out the roi or do you want the bigger title? You want the bigger role? Like what's your boss's metric? What's your boss's boss's metric? What's the CEO care about, right? They don't care about those keyword rankings. So I think that was a big learning for me uh, that kind of falls under this, the umbrella of this question. Um, and so then, yeah, I, I like certainly needed to know my traffic projections. Like I had really good, like built a decent model where if like we take this much potential traffic, here's what it will turn into in three, six, 12 months. Uh, and then once I got at Scribe, like you have to know your product and what, like conversion rates are and each piece of content type of content has different rates. But once I got some of that data, like this type of blog converts at 3%, this blog at five, this, you know, templates page at 10 or something like that, then I could put those numbers into the spreadsheet of like, here's what each blog, the traffic over a year, then we can say like the estimates of the, the signups. And so showing those projections, like at a really simplified level and trying to explain a spreadsheet over like verbally, uh, that's how, you know, did that and so you could do that in the aggregate and then show the ceo we put put this much content in and the last input i guess is 
just as much content, but what's also the cost of that content, right? What's the cost for the freelancers, the link builders, like to some extent, like you're putting in your salary, depending on how people are thinking about it. But here's all the inputs. Like this is the cost of our content program. Here's the estimated ROI. Here's like our month or estimated month of break even. What the, and then I think the beauty of content is like, okay, here's the, the ROI of one year, but then content, generally speaking, will live two, three, four, five years out. So uh, that's where it becomes like a really like, it's a great program for the CEO if you can show those numbers because it just really extends for a long time. I love that. So when you're building this content, you know, a lot of times we talk about, you know, write content that provides value and, and you're writing to the user and all that kind of stuff. How do you get that kind of content? You talked a lot about blog posts and things like that. What do you do to, from a tactical perspective, and I, sorry, just to take a step back, I love that you focused on the goal first. Okay, my boss cares about revenue. I need to generate content that generates revenue. So now I'm going to work backward through the process. So when you come to content, how are you getting it to move further down the funnel? How are you getting that audience to move towards signups and different things? How are you using content at multiple stages? How are you really making that shift from just traffic to signups? Yeah, it actually happened like while I was at Scribe, frankly, like my, I came in and they're like, here's what we think our, you know, first four personas will be. It's like, I built content clusters on those. I remember it being like employee onboarding, sales operations, whatever. I did exactly what we would have done G2. What is this? How does it work? You know, what tools they use, all those type of things. And we got some traffic there and really the conversion rates never ended up being like super meaningful. Like we were seeing, you know, half a percent, 1% from some of these blogs. It was like, we're not writing to the intent of somebody who actually wants to use Scribe. Like we were kind of stretching. So that was like the playbook from G2. And for me, it was kind of inverting it. So did know some things that would work, you know, so like these won't all be groundbreaking, but like a software list, I knew this from G2. You write best, this type of software, best software for this person, whatever it is, make a list of 10 tools. Like if you can get number one spot on the, with those type of uh, keywords, those convert five, 10, 15% of the time. So, we did all of those and then we just like took that to like the extreme. We went like any sort of use case that we could with uh, Scribe. We put those in there and we plugged ourselves in and we just expanded on those. But then we tested other things as well. So we knew that one and we really extended that like horizontally. But then we looked for other type of terms. Um, what would people like want to convert on? I knew templates from other people like that had done PLG, like templates really convert well. But then it was like, that's only a couple of keyword types that you can really go after. Uh, one that we found through Scribe, like, and this came from actually asking our users. I think this is like what, probably what you're asking, like at the core. It's like, we asked people, what do you call, like Scribe was a new tool. What do you call Scribe? What would you, what competitors do you use before? Who would you use if we went away, et cetera? But that, what do you call us? Someone called us like an SOP generator. So we just tested it. We made a landing page for SOP generators. Suddenly hundreds of people were coming in every single month, signing up for the tool because they were looking for something to generate their SOPs. So suddenly we had a new like keyword type that we had never identified before because we spoke to a user. And then we took that in like every type of documentation, Scribe as a documentation tool. Uh, we just like added the word generator to it and some work better than others, certainly, but we did that. And so I think finding those like through lines, finding terms that people look for when they're really at the decision making or they have a problem, that's where you'll see a lot of conversions. So just really trying to find like people's search habits at the middle or bottom of the funnel and expand that. So same thing, like alternatives to any competitor we had or pseudo competitor, you know, us versus other tools. We did all of those things. And it's just about finding one keyword format that works and then taking that to like the extreme, the logical end and like like really maximizing those terms. Love it. Love it. So you talked about find the goal, track the revenue, kind of work backwards from there. You know, now let's say you found something where you're like, okay, I'm pretty sure people would convert with this kind of content. How do you best, I mean, obviously you clearly know SEO and things of that nature. How, you know, let's say I've, I found the perfect thing, you know, comparing my software to others and I've written a really good piece, how do I get that in front of people? Is it just hoping on rankings? Are you promoting? How are you getting this content in front of people once you found the right content? Yeah, it certainly depends on the size of your team and things. I like this play mostly organic. So I'm I'm focused there and putting all my efforts in to optimizing that page, doing all the interlinking, you know, making sure 
we have all those technical pieces locked down. Like we're putting so much effort into organic. We need to nail this before we do all this other distribution. I think the other pieces like the link building, that type of stuff that is a little bit offsite and like can lead to some other traffic sources, but really like that still contributes to the SEO side. From there, like if we've done that really well, or we have enough resources, we can definitely look into distribution. I think understanding your content type and how people find that content really matters. Like if they're, if it's really just a a single problem that people have, like you don't need to throw that into a Slack community or put it onto Reddit, generally speaking, like people aren't looking for that content there. Um, But other content, people are asking questions, how, you know, what's the best tool for this? Or has anybody found a better way to do SOPs? We might go into Reddit and answer that a little bit and have a a post on how they could do that better or whatever it is. So there's other ways, but I really like to nail the one channel first and then like have that scaling, whether that's like through freelancers or whatever else before I build in that distribution. However, like there's only so much search traffic and you can generate more demand for things. Like for instance, software has got a good piece. It's like AI app builder or something like that, but nobody was searching for that six months ago, but they built a tool internally. They put a landing page and you can actually see the search volume in, Ahrefs going up every month. Uh, And I don't know if they paid influencers or influencers just found it, but tens of thousands of people liked and reshared these TikTok videos about an AI app generator. So there's ways that you can actually create SEO demand for tools by like going through other sources, say like an influencer to your organic focus landing page uh, and creating more demand there. So there's definitely a flywheel if you can find the, like where people are searching and why they would want to consume your content. I love it. I love it. Well, this is all the time that we have today, but um, I've learned a ton about how to tie your content to revenue. Jacob, thank you so much for the discussion, all the insights and everything you've shared. If anyone wants to continue the conversation and connect with you online, how do they find you? Yeah, Ben, the best way, definitely on LinkedIn. Um, Yeah, I'm happy to talk to people, whether that's in the posts, I talk about SEO and content, you know, pretty much every single week, but always answer people in the DMs or comments or stuff. And just, I love to learn there. And so both giving back and then learning from others, I would, I would love to connect with people who are talking about content as well. Perfect. Love it. Well, Jacob, thanks again for the time. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Content Amplified Podcast. Please subscribe and leave us a review. And for additional ways to get more out of your content, visit our website at getmasset.com. That's getmasset.com. And tune in next time to the Content Amplified Podcast.